Hello again, many thanks for joining me. This is Business Life. My name is Emmanuel Abwaji Yafi. Coming up in this evening's edition, Dangote Cement justifies price of its products on the Ghanaian market, saying it's explaining calls by a local cement manufacturers association for government to sanction them are untenable. Current challenges with economy and uncertainty surrounding the December polls having minimal impact on investments and deposits. Minerals Commission says putting a stop to illegal small-scale mining and galamsey operations will require renewed collective will together with implementation of existing laws. These and others coming up on Business Life today. Stay tuned in right back. Business Live today is brought to you by GCB Bank. Cement manufacturer Dangote has blamed the recent attacks on its operations by the Association of Cement Manufacturers, in particular, on its increasing market share. The association early this month also blamed the Nigerian company of engaging in unfair trade practices and dumping, among others. But speaking at a press conference, Managing Director Thor Nygaard said his company will only continue to provide best quality services to consumers. We are taking market share for our competition, which we continue to do almost every month. And of course, our competition do doesn't like that. So they are fighting us and they are going to continue to fight us every week now, that's what we know, because they don't want to shut us down. They don't like that we are taking market share. And as he said, we have been concentrating on promoting our products, improving our service, improving deliveries, instead of res uh, responding to the attack we have seen the last year. But we find a time now that we have to respond and set the record straight. In the future, we will go back and continue to do the best job we can to supply quality cement to the Ghanaians at an affordable price. We just see that there are lots of advertisements for 42.5 hours. And when we go to the market, we see that the 32.5 is what's available. Their intention of, we are not accusing them for deceiving anybody. But this is a fact. You can go and check the market, it's 32.5, and you see a lot of 42.5 art in the, in the uh, advertisement. Meanwhile, Dangote Cement has justified the price of its products on the Ghanaian market as competitive. The Association of Cement Manufacturers of Ghana has called on government to sanction the company or even ban it from operating in the country. Media Relations Manager for Dangote, Etonam Komla Bwame, explains the claim is untenable. Our price as we speak now is entirely not the lowest on the market. Indeed, our X factory price is 29.3. And we have been operating this 29.30 for more than six months now. And so it is not true that we have gone down our price. What rather is happening is that because of our innovative ways of doing business, we deliver free of charge to the end user. We also ensure that those who are able to lift many more bags from our factory get some incentives. So the distributor themselves are able to uh, beat down prices. They share their profit with people. That is why our prices are almost always lower on the market. But in terms of X factory price, our prices are indeed one of the highest we have in Ghana. I always maintain that at any point that we are working outside the laws of the country, anybody could raise issues. But so long as we are working within the laws of the country, so long as our operations is making Ghana to understand that we have a higher quality of cement, so long as the end user is getting the benefit of price stability on the market, we are happy and we are good to go. And away from that, a new international airline has joined Ghana's aviation industry. Known as Kronos Airlines, the flight which will operate flight schedules from Malabo to Accra was inaugurated at the Kotoka International Airport in Accra today. Speaking to Joy Business, the chief operating officer of Kronos Airlines said Ghana's aviation industry remains enviable in the region. 
Ghana's aviation industry continues to receive many international airlines with increasing volume of traffic. The airport company limited is currently embarking on a refurbishment of the airport with ongoing development terminal 3 at the Kotoka International Airport to accommodate the mountain air traffic and passenger handling. This coupled with 20% reduction in aviation fuel is making the industry very attractive. The new Kronos airline was inaugurated today at the airport. Present was the Equatorial Guinea ambassador to Ghana. The new airline Kronos will bridge the gap between Equatorial Guinea capital Malabo and Accra twice weekly. The chief operating officer of the airline, George Kiafa, said development in Ghana's industry makes it one of the most competitive in the region. Uh, Ghana is, uh, has a head step of many other African countries, which I think uh, bringing them closer can enable all these countries to follow the same steps. So we try to bring uh, African countries closer and easier to be faster and that will enable to develop business relationship, tourism and many other things. The new reforms are expected to cause profitability in the sector to inch up. Now, current challenges with the economy and uncertainty surrounding the December polls have had minimal impact on investments and deposits. These are the views of an investment analyst and a banker. Recent reports by the Bank of Ghana shows that there, there has been a significant reduction in deposits and credit delivery. Executive Director of Investment House Data Bank, Reverend Daniel Ubami Tete, tells Joy Business that that has not been the case for Data Bank. Well, I do not have data for the entire industry, but if I'm using uh, what I see at Data Bank as a proxy, and in, as you may know, when it comes to the mutual fund area, we are the market leaders. Uh, we can say that it's a mixed situation. Um, you find people seem to be gravitating more towards money market fixed income type investment. So we are not seeing um, a slowdown, if you like, in that area. We rather are seeing a bit of a pickup. But when you take um, equity investments, you find that it's really suffering. And it may also be attributable to the fact that if you take the Ghana stock exchange, um, the, the market has been in negative territory, you know, and the typical thing for many people is to check out of investing in equities when the market is going down, when actually the prudent thing to do is to do your analysis to be sure that you are picking the stocks that may be losing value because you are, as we say in investing, you pay the price, but what you get is value. You know, so in terms of the reaction of investors, what we hear them saying is that, yes, things are tough, and um, so disposable income has been affected but we are seeing people still pushing money into money market and fixed income products as opposed to going into equity. So I guess it's a situation of people, some people understanding that um, as for investment, it's important to create the kind of future you want so we keep it going no matter how tight things are. You are Managing Director of Capital Bank, Reverend Odonko also maintains that the bank has not experienced any challenge with deposits. So long as we keep banking simple, we believe that the aggregate result of it is that we will build up the relationships, we will build up the level of the banked population, and um, whether we have elections or not, we will still be able to grow our business. It's so safe to keep your, your money with the bank. We have a strong um, um, financial services industry and uh, we have strong institutions and it's so much better to keep the money in the account than to keep it under your bed. Send Ghana, an NGO, has hinted it is pushing for the implementation of a fat tax to curtail the patronage of junk foods. When successful, you may be paying more for your favorite fried chicken and hamburgers or whatever is deemed as junk foods. 
Chief Executive Officer of Cent Ghana, Sayafa Kamara, explains the aim of the fat tax campaign is to make consumers aware of their food choices and also to drum home the importance of curbing obesity. The CEO of Cent Ghana disclosed this to Joy News after a press conference to call on the presidential candidates to commit to ending malnutrition in Ghana. This year, when Sen uh, prepare the people's budget, which is the contribution of grassroots groups to the budget of 2017, one of the points we made to the Minister of Finance is that it is costing the Ghanaian economy billions of cities in terms of health, hypertension, diabetes, malnutrition, fat, all kinds of diseases that are related to the changing food pattern. And we noticed over the last few years, as our economy is growing, different type of food joint that in the West are well known for preparing food that promote fatness. Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's, uh, all kinds of uh, fast food. We are saying that this kind of diet is costing the economy huge amount. So we should introduce a fat tax. So every time you buy that very fat chicken that has been quick fried, that will make you fat, and therefore you go to our hospitals and we have to pay because you become hypertensive at the age of 35 because the children who are eating that, they cannot think properly because they, they, there's too much sugar in the drink that are being served because the food is prepared with oil that is too fatty. Government should get a percentage of the income that you get and use that to invest in educating the future generation so that they can develop dietary habits that will prevent fatness. Away from that, small-scale miners or artisanal miners in Oboise have finally agreed to relocate to a new site designated to them by the Minerals Commission. It comes, as the miners said, to be illegally occupying Anglo Ashanti's concession, agitated and destroyed property in protest against how the relocation plan was being implemented. Lab FM's Prince Apia has the rest of the story. The standoff between the small-scale miners and Anglo Ashanti over illegal occupation of the company's concession has persisted since last February. It compelled Anglo Ashanti to sue government of Ghana over security concerns within its concession. Anglo Gold Ashanti has released 60% of its concession to the artisanal miners, but officials are worried small scale miners continue to trespass into the remaining 40% retained. The small scale miners argue the relinquished area was not prepared for mining. I'm currently in one of the areas prepared for the illegal miners to come occupy. These pegs you see here indicate where each Galamse worker where in the local palace they call ghetto is supposed to occupy. So it continues like that. Everyone has his or her own uh, um, ghetto to occupy. So the place is already prepared. But the illegal miners are claiming that most of the areas allocated by the Minerals Commission is not well prepared and so they are not going to come. Uh -huh. Minerals Commission drew a roadmap to facilitate the relocation of 3,734 registered small-scale miners to occupy these areas. They include Nyame Betre, Kotopreso, Abejem, Adimenu, Sushenso, Jabeso, and Amponyase. The illegal miners embarked on a demonstration last week accusing Anglo Godashanti of acting contrary to the roadmap. Sustainable manager Nana Ampofo denies the claim. ADA has stuck to the roadmap. Roadmap said and had in the S last paragraph that areas within the concession which have already been secured should continue to be secured. To continue to be secured as we go ahead and move people from all the other areas to the new area. So AGA hasn't bridged the roadmap. 
The Renault's Commission had earlier on Wednesday met with leadership of the miners who agreed to leave, but they want Anglogo to further deepen holes for them. Chief Saha Na Yahuza is executive member of the Artisanal Miners Association. Because Ghana passed and free. 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 Ampofo says the mine can only begin operation when they declare their remaining concession safe for work. I was speaking with you now, all these areas have been declared no-go zones for our employees. It is only when the security forces have been able to secure the area and declare to us that it is now a go area, that we can go back there and assess the extent of damage that has been caused to our infrastructure and every other thing that is there. When that assessment is made and completed, then we can even know when we can put everything there back to where it was before the incursion and then we can move ahead from there we've always said we're looking for an investor it is after we've done all these things and we've been able to go out there to tell the world that listen the mine is a secure place now people can come and pump in their money meanwhile the miners want authorities to allow them go for the equipment for peace and cordiality to prevail between the two parties prince apia reporting now small holder farmers in the bonahaf region will soon begin to double their yields and make meaningful earnings with the introduction of m farms agribusiness solutions the m farms platform which consists of various applications and solutions built to solve challenges facing various players within the agri sector is to establish linkages between farmers and inputs or output market services the platform was launched on the sidelines of the sixth annual pre-harvest event organized by the USAID and the Ghana Grains Council at Sunyang. Nesta Kafui Ajuma reports. Mobile phone technology presents a great opportunity to integrate dispersed smallholder farmers into structured input and out markets. Mobile phone-based ICTs can facilitate timely access to an exchange of information among actors along the value chain to manage transactions, arrange logistics and ensure quality standards are adhered to by smallholder farmers. M Farms is an integrated and customized ICT platform designed to help stakeholders in the agricultural value chain communicate with each other efficiently, establish and maintain business relationships, and manage the flow of goods and services. The platform consists of mobile applications, Java and Android, as well as web applications. With the introduction of M Farms agribusiness services to the food basket of the country, it is anticipated that smallholder farmers will increase their yields and incomes, get market before production, learn about improved seed and fertilizer application, and have access to daily weather reports, among other benefits. Chief Executive Officer of Image Art, Kwame Adom Bento, quantifies the impact made by M Farms in Africa and Ghana. The service we are providing here in Ghana, our launching today, is to enable farmers have access to these information to enable them increase productivity. Many a times you find the farmers complaining about price, price, price. But the, the issue is not really price, but it has to do with production. If you're able to increase your yield, it means that even price go down, you are still able to make enough to cover your costs. But if you don't have enough yield from your land, it means that when prices drop, you, you will not be able to recover your costs, which is a very bad thing. So we are here to address that issue, to ensure that farmers here always do profitable business and also increase yield. When there's increase in yield, it, what it's going to mean is that prices of commodities is going to fall. It means that we can buy food cheaply, but the farmer will still be able to make profit. Smallholder farmers in the Bonafo region are expected to record increased yields if they are hooked onto M Farms services. Since 2009, that is where we started M Farms. Uh, we started here in the northern region, and now we are in 12 African countries and other uh, six African countries where we have agents who are also doing so. In total, we have about 19 African countries. 
countries where we have operations. And we have big impact, especially in Ghana and Rwanda. Nesta Kafuya Jomez report. You're still watching Business Live. We're taking a short break. We'll be back. Business Live today was brought to you by GCB Bank. Welcome back to Business Live. Now, the Ghana Stock Exchange has closed for the week. And uh, joining me online to tell us how the equities performed on the market for this week is Beta Atubika, a uh, research analyst. Beta, good evening and welcome. Hello, Emmanuel. Good evening. Now, Beta, which equities did extremely well and which were the losers? Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Emmanuel, for today. Um, before I even talk about the movers today on the stock market, let's say this past two trading days has recorded or seen much equity trading in terms of volume, that's the total volume of shares trading. Over 200,000 shares were traded yesterday, and today we saw a similar trend. And that was because we saw UT Bank um, yesterday and today trading very huge volumes of shares, but the equity is so priced at 3 pesos per share. And today it traded 209,200 shares at 6,276 Ghana cities. Uh, we had other equities trading. Cal traded 12,900 shares at 80 pesos. EGA, that's Ecobank, traded 2,100 shares at 685 pesos per share. And we had ECI still at 11 pesos per share after trading 11,300 shares. FML traded quite a large number today. Yesterday we saw below 500 shares trading in FMO, but today it traded 2,000 shares at 90 to 80 percent, so at 90 to 80 percent. And this value, uh, from our analysis, is undervalued, and there's a possibility that the equity could add up to investor's capital before the end of the year or by end of first half 2017. GCB traded 300 shares, and the equity is still at 3 to 60 percent. Gold traded 100 shares at 1 to 17 percent. Each piece of cousins is still at 22 percent. After trading 100 units of each shares, SIC also traded 2,500 shares at 14 pesos per share. And then total traded 1,100 shares at 2 cities, 4 pesos per share. So today, total gained 4 pesos on its um, previous. It, it gained, no, it lost 9 pesos. Total lost 9 pesos to close at 2 cities per share. Previously, total was trading at 2 cities, 9 pesos per share. And okay. this drop is not encouraging for total at all. This year has not been a very good year for total. It has lost more than 50% of its share value this right. year. Unilever traded 500 at 8 cities, 47 pesos. And we saw UT Bank um, trading the highest volumes at 3 pesos per share. So this is what we had. We had 40 transactions or trades going on, on the stock market. And then the total value of the shares that traded closed at 60,141 Ghana cities. All right, thank you very much, Beta Tubika, for that update. Now time for the interview of the day. The Minerals Commission has once again frowned against illegal small-scale mining and galamsey activities in the country. CEO of the Commission, Dr. Tony Orban, urged a collective will to complement existing laws to make it more punitive for culprits to persistently engage in such illegal activities. The situation has assumed alarming proportions, with some people calling for its legalization and control. This, they believe, will help regulate the activities and generate some taxes for government. In an interview with Joy Business, Dr. Aubin alleged some prominent persons in society are, in one way or the other, linked to these nefarious activities and would only require much commitment by all stakeholders to put a stop to it. I think we need to have a collective wrong, a definition of a collective wrong. What is wrong? And if it is wrong uh, to me as government in power, it must be wrong to uh, the uh, opposition party because it's a collective, it's a national wrong. And so once we, the, the, once the illegal miners know that hey, all the parties are against us, they will try and formalize themselves. I'm not saying that people should not work or do small-scale mining. I always am quick to add because I know what it is. I know that small-scale mining is good for our country if we do it properly. But to do it illegally, it makes it difficult to even control and manage. You haven't shamed any chief. We understand some of them are behind it. Some district chief executives, some policemen. Uh, we, we haven't really been able to get them to do the right thing. 
Yes, that's part of the collective uh, wrong thing. You know, if you look at the people who are involved in illegal mining, if you look at the, if you if you if you really look at the profile, the hidden and the and the and the overt profile, uh, you realize that um, uh, all of us are involved. You might find people in a commission, the minerals commission, some are overtly, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, discreetly involved. You, you wouldn't know. You may see a pastor uh, covertly involved. You may find a police officer covertly involved, or sometimes openly, because I know there are some officers who have been informed have um, machines, excavators, and though they rent that out. So to stop that business is to hurt them. So the whole thing is very complex. So it's, it's very complex. But the way out is to have the will to stop it. And this will must be collective. This will must be, you know, the way we are, when a writing is being done, you find others say, oh, no, this is this, this, that, this is wrong, is it? And then sometimes, and human beings are human beings. But if we define this collective right and wrong, then we will all collectively. Many thanks for joining me on Business Live today and, of course, for being my company on uh, Business Live throughout the week. It's been a great pleasure and I hope you join me again same time next week for more interesting developments in the world of business. My name is Imano Akwaji. In the meantime, you can tweet at us, Joy Business, uh, Joy Business with our handle, Facebook, Joy Business, is our page. And for more businesses, log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. Have a great evening.